I tried emulating Sony's most underrated console of all time right on my Android device. And after weeks of testing, troubleshooting, here's what I found. Now, the PS Vita wasn't just another handheld, it was Sony's most ambitious one. Dual analog sticks before the Switch even existed, a bright, crisp OLED screen that still holds up today, console-level games that somehow ran in your hand. Titles like Gravity Rush, Persona 4 Golden, Mortal Kombat 9, Killzone Mercenary, these weren't mobile games. They were full-blown console experiences trapped inside a handheld. But for all its brilliance, Sony fumbled it. It was like watching an angel fall. The Vita didn't fail because it was bad. It failed because the world wasn't ready for it. And that's what makes Vita 3K so fascinating. It's not just emulating a console, it's resurrecting a forgotten idea. The PS Vita had a crazy lineup of high-end titles, games like Persona 4, Uncharted, Call of Duty Black Ops, and God of War collections. But when it comes to emulation, only a fraction of that library actually runs smoothly on Android. Sure, the Vita 3K emulator has made huge progress. Over 50% of games are considered playable on PC, but on Android, the experience can be way more unpredictable. Some games run fine, others crash, and a few look like they were never meant to leave Sony's hardware. It's a reminder that Vita 3K still has some catching up to do, especially compared to its older, more battle-tested sibling, the PSP. I already made a video that shows the complete setup guide for the Vita 3K. It's linked up here and in the description below. One recurring question in the comments is, how do I get the font package file? Apparently the PlayStation link breaks sometimes. I've uploaded a working copy to Google Drive so you don't have to chase dead links. Links in the description. With the firmware installation phase out of the way, then comes the game loading part. Unlike other emulators like the PPSSPP, it's not as simple as downloading ROMs and then plug and play. You have to be a bit geeked up and apply a little finesse to get those PS Vita games running. As I previously mentioned, the Vita 3K supports only about half of the original PS Vita library. For reference, the PPSSPP supports 99% of PSP games. Here's my exact time-saving workflow. Copy this and you'll stop burning hours on titles that won't work. First and foremost, check the compatibility list. Go to the Vita 3K compatibility page and use your browser's Find in Page to search the game name. Then, read the status, not just the title. Each result shows title, serial number, playability status, which ranges from nothing to bootable to intro, to in-game, to playable. Only playable is worth your time if you want a smooth session. Then, match the serial number or ROM ID. When you see a game marked playable, note the serial. For example, PCSF00220. That serial tells you exactly which build or version of the game the emulator was tested with. It matters. Use legitimately obtained game files that match that serial. Don't go downloading random files that don't match. If your dumb serial doesn't match the compatibility entry, expect crashes and wasted time. For instance, the game Need for Speed Most Wanted 12 was recommended to me by this user and I decided to check it out. So I follow the same procedure and head over to Vita 3K compatibility list search for the game and see if it's playable, and as we see here, that's probably not a good idea to even try that, but I appreciate the recommendation. I'll also leave a list of games that I've personally tried and they work great even on my MediaTek device. Do check it out. Now, let's talk about some common issues with the emulator because yeah, it's not all smooth sailing. First off, my biggest gripe, there's no save or load state feature. That's a basic function every decent emulator should have. PPSSPP, Nether SX2, Dolphin, they all got it. But here, nothing. Honestly, 
I have no idea how I'm supposed to beat those brutal God of War levels without quick saves. Then there's the occasional crash when booting certain games, and sometimes the touchscreen controls just stop responding altogether. Luckily, most of these can be fixed by simply force closing the app and clearing your cache. Not ideal, but it gets you back in the game. One recent maneuver I discovered was how to fix God of War collections stuck at the load screen. Even though the game is tagged as playable, this issue still persists. So what I do is I close the emulator, clear the cache memory, reopen the app, but this time I'll launch another game first, say Gravity Rush. And 10 seconds into booting, I'll quit the game and relaunch God of War. Pretty weird, but it does work 90% of the time. I was also told by another user to try out a forked version of Vita 3K called Vita 3K ZX, supposedly optimized for MediaTek devices with better performance and extra features. So I gave it a shot, but honestly, I didn't see any major improvement. Performance was pretty much on par with the main emulator, and in some cases, even worse. After a lot of trial and error, I think I've finally cracked it. The unspoken rule of PS Vita emulation is simple. Tweak, crash, reload, and hope for the best. But I must say, the times when you do get the games running, it's pretty enjoyable and fun. You almost forget what a pain it is to set up. The on-screen controls are amazing to use. I especially like the front slash back touchscreen buttons, which was well adapted to the God of War Collections games. I do wish they included haptic feedback before halting the emulator's development. And the God of War duology performs a lot better on the Vita 3K than on Nether SX2 for the PS2. Even with the graphical issues, I can still upskill to 2X without any lags. Snapdragon devices are noticeably favored by the Vita 3K, as they enjoy better performance because of the use of custom drivers, such as the Turnip driver, which the emulator supports, but this option is unavailable to MediaTek devices like mine. But even with that, I still get decent results in some games. The best example of this being Gravity Rush. When it comes to thermal management, the Vita 3K handles it better than other emulators, only recording up to 37 to 39 degrees Celsius after two plus hours of gameplay. If only the developers would get things going again, there's a lot of room for improvement. Anyways, fingers crossed. Before I wrap this up, I've got to say, the response on the last video blew me away. The comments, the questions, especially from those of you who actually tried setting up Vita 3K after watching. That kind of feedback, that's what keeps me experimenting. A lot of you pointed out issues with the font package link, shared fixes, even dropped game recommendations. That kind of support makes this whole thing more of a community test lap than just a YouTube channel. So if you're new here, stick around. This isn't a review channel, it's an experiment in progress. Hit that like button if you found this useful and drop your own tips below. Whatever recommendations you give goes a long way for myself and others who are interested in content like this. Thanks guys for always being part of this. <laughs>